Everybody hey, can have Tim. permission to record. Okay. So. Yep. Tim, I'll start. Um, we saw what we saw in the series. Uh, give us some things that maybe caught your eye during fall practices that we didn't get to see. Players who took leaps or themes with the team or whatever. I'd say more defensive depth in the infield, for sure, especially with uh, Diaz and Gordon and Valstein. I think those three guys are capable of of playing defense and they're, they're capable of playing offense too. I saw that at certain points. Um, Keegan's development behind the plate, uh, Bolger's development behind the plate, albeit it was last week, week and a half where he got behind the plate on a consistent basis. Uh, I'd say TJ McKenzie. I like TJ's development as a, as a player. He's been very steady in terms of his his approach to what he's doing. Um, that probably would be those are the areas that, that stand out from a pitching standpoint. Uh, certainly watching Riley, Carter Holton. Um, there was, we didn't have, you know, there were some older kids who just didn't get an opportunity to pitch the, this, this fall. But I, I would say that out of, the pitching staff, I think those are the guys that I would say st stood out. Uh, what do you think you learned about your pitching staff over the course of the fall? And we need a lot of development. I think that the thing that is tough to gauge is who can handle the volume of being a starter, uh, who can do that consistently. And um, we may not know that until we go through it during the course of the spring, but I, I think I'd have a hard time piecing that together right now. Uh, I, I don't think anyone's identified themselves in a, in a certain role up to, up to this point. Um, Grayson Moore was another kid that I, I, and Hunter Owen are two kids that just came to mind as you asked that question, Robbie, that I thought developed over the course of the fall, but I, I couldn't really give you an idea of, of where any of those guys fit right now. We've developed some as, as starters, potential starters, and then others, we've developed them at, at short dose guys, but that could change as we go into January and February. We're taking the ball away from them for the most part right now, and they're tossing a little bit, but um, we'll, we'll get that going again in December and January and start trying to get a better idea of, of where those guys fit. Um, Tim, first of all, just why was the the final black and gold game canceled? And also it looked like maybe Donye Evans left that first game with some kind of injury. Is, is he injured? Is he good to go? What's his status? He just had some soreness in his, uh, in his tricep. So we just held him back, but that, that basically is one of the reasons why guys like Donye and, and Schultz and and Moore had pitched on that on that Sunday. Had they been held back, then we probably would have been able to accrue a few more innings, but we just couldn't. And when we got down to it, we were going to end up playing a three or four inning game, and that that really didn't wouldn't dignify the end of a series. So we'll have to figure out another way to break a tie. Hey Tim, I've seen a lot of your falls and it's rare that I see a freshman get the ball to start a game. You did it in an exhibition game and in a black and gold game with Carter Holton. Now, some of that may be you didn't have as many proven guys as maybe you've had in, in, in some years past, and, and some of that is probably on him. Uh, how, how much of, of what was the case there in terms of, of him getting the ball when, when he got it? I, I think it was confidence more than anything, Chris. He's just a kid that – you feel like can handle situations because his ability to throw strikes. Uh, he's very comfortable when he pitches. I saw that from day one to that the the final day that he pitched. He's got a good arm. He command a breaking ball. He throws strikes. But I, I just felt like he, we felt like even against North Carolina, that wasn't really a leap of faith. It was just plugging someone into a spot that he felt like he could handle it. And whether it was Patrick or him or even Miles Garrett, you just felt like give this guy a shot. Let's see what he can do. It's a kind of a no, you know, it's no kind of a low temperature situation 
for at least for us, but for for the kid, it might be a very high temperature situation going to North Carolina, fit, you know, pitching first game in a fall and in a pretty good crowd setting. But I, I thought he handled it himself very well throughout the fall. Um, Tim, you know, what does it mean for you guys to see Dansby playing in the World Series with the Braves? And do you think that his experience, you know, going back to back to back College World Series um, and, and obviously winning in 2014, you know, has helped prepare him for for this kind of moment with the Braves? Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I think those experiences really more maybe than they would lead on. But I think Dansby would tell you that because there's not a lot of times in your life where you play meaningful games in situations where uh, there's a lot of attention surrounded by those circumstances. And he's been in playoff baseball before at the major league level, not the World Series, but he's a kid that continually develops as a player, both mentally and physically. And I think, and I'm not around him every day, I think he develops as a leader too. And he, he certainly did that in, in this environment. But uh, yeah, that's to, to watch him operate in that situation is, 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 uh, is gratifying for everyone around here. I mean, everyone is a big follower of his, as they are of all of our kids that play at that level. But especially now when your focus is on two teams and going for the, the, the final prize, it's, uh, it, it's good to watch. But I certainly feel like the those experiences in Omaha twice, 14 and 15 in extended stays, you know, 15, 16 days each time, 30 days in Omaha in the College World Series is, uh, I would say, a pretty good, uh, pretty good internship. And what do you think was key for, you know, Dansby's success in the 2014 College World Series when he was most outstanding player? He's driven. I mean, purely driven. I mean, he's a He's, he's a good player. He, he does have tools, but he's, there's a mental side to, to Dansby where it separates him from other players. He's one of those kids that thinks he can. He's very confident, um, but he, it's contained confidence. He doesn't, he's got a, a controlled ego, and the controlled ego is one where he knows he's as good as anyone that, that steps on the field, and he, he, he proves it. Uh, I think think going back to the SEC year there, it's final year where I forget what it was, but it was such a gift for Vanderbilt because I think he was, he felt to like, because there were so many shortstops, Bregman was the other one. He felt like second team, all SEC. And I knew at that point right there, I said, that's perfect. That, that, because he never say anything about it, but in, internally you'd say, okay, all right, we'll see. And I think at that point right there, he went off in the SEC tournament and certainly had some big hits in the regional and super regional and played a, a very good college world series too. Tim, Kenneth Mallory was a kid who hit the ball really well uh, this weekend, hits to different fields. That's it just seemed to me like he had a very mature approach for a freshman. Can you tell us a little bit more about him? Kenny Mallory is is uh, Kenny Mallory makes me feel old because his dad was a center fielder at Elon College when I started the program at Presbyterian. So it's come full circle with his dad's uh, you know son now playing for me. So um, yeah, he's a he's a he's a hardworking kid. He's he's one of those kids that we committed during his sophomore year. Uh, Bax really liked his base running acumen and how he played the outfield and his ability to hit. And I think he's a kid that once he gets stronger, he's got a flat swing so he can barrel the ball to different directions of the field. He's got a lot to learn, but I like the kid. I, I like him because his acumen for the game, his intelligence level, his response to situations is good. He's got a nice spirit about him in terms of being able to coach and teach him. I, I really enjoy being around him. He, because he, he, he this is stupid, but the, the, the kids are calling him Ken VP because of how he played in the, the, the black and gold, but it's, it's, you know, it's more funny than anything, but um, he wasn't, but yet they made him feel good by coining him that name. Um, with 
so many players on the team this year that can play multiple positions. You know, how are you kind of approaching the defensive lineups? Are you planning to have players mostly stick to one position during the season or are they going to, you know, kind of move, move around more? Well, we always, you move them around every day, which is something we've always tried to do, especially the last, I would say the last five, six years, which is beneficial to us when there's someone that goes down. But I, I think they need to get used to it. I, I like the fact that they can, they can learn other um, ways to enter the entry points into a game because of their ability to play the outfield and, and play the infield. I think it's one of the first statements I make to them when we first start talking about our defensive philosophy is come prepared to play every position on the field and don't don't pigeonhole yourself in one spot otherwise it's detrimental to your growth which it is because you can see it doesn't matter the players that with it, maybe with the exception of Dansby they go up to the big leagues and they play all over so um, I think it helps us and we haven't got to a point where we've where any position has been that's our third baseman that's our shortstop that's our second baseman and we've got a couple guys that have experience but because carter was out we just we haven't we haven't really termed anyone as as a starter at any any spot Tim, what do you think of rob gordon so far uh, i thought like when i was watching training there was sort of like a like a smooth athleticism there that sort of stood out to me yep there is. He he plays with a good clock defensively. He's got a good good glove. Uh, his throwing arm is accurate. He's uh, he's just a young kid who, when you watch him, you say the only thing that's going to keep him back right now is strength. But that's just going to be maturity, and he knows it too. Uh, and actually, he's got a pretty good feel of the bat too. He he didn't have. A tremendous amount of success offensively, but not a lot of the freshmen ever do. But I, I, I'm, I've got a lot of confidence in him defensively, and he runs the bases really, really well. You talk about high acumen. I mentioned Kenny in that regard. This kid has got a, a real good acumen for running the bases. He wants to run. He wants to go. Uh, the only thing you'd give him is a stop sign because he makes good decisions on when he wants to go too. How do you feel about? Troy Leneve at first right now, is that his primary position or is he still maybe an option in the outfield somewhere? Yeah, I'd say he's an option in the outfield for sure. I wanted him to, to play first base just so that if, if he needed to go there, he could do it. So uh, we didn't really even cross train him, Chris. We just kept him at first base the entire fall just so he could concentrate on that, not have to go back and forth. But yeah, he's, he's certainly an option in the outfield too. We've moved him around there in scrimmages but his training time has all been at first base and he's gotten better. He's, he's gotten better. He's, he's handled himself pretty well. He, he played some third base and shortstop in high school, but I, I would say he's probably corner outfield first base um, option for us. How'd you feel about him losing the mustache? That was a good choice. <laughs> Mustaches don't help some of those kids. It looks like they just have drank a glass of chocolate milk. It's just, you know, it's sustain that really doesn't, in my opinion, help them. Is this conversation you've had with him? <laughs> yeah, I have it with all of them. And that's a losing battle once we get into the postseason. It's like hockey, you know, it's like <laughs> all hell breaks loose and I'm going, oh, Jesus, I just lost my program again for the 20th straight year. But if we, uh, if we do it, you know, if we go to postseason, so be it. It's, one, it's the one luxury they get, but it, it's not really a, an area that I get fired up about. Um, first of all, is that a Christmas tree on your desk behind you? A holiday tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, you're you're a little bit behind in that regard. That's a holiday tree. Thank you, Robbie. So after I like the, I like the fall theme. Yeah, that's Ma it's all Maggie, though. It's not like something I spend an hour doing. I, I find better things to do than that. But I like what Maggie does. She dresses it up. Be Thanksgiving tree here soon. No, it'll be a Veterans Day tree. And then it'll go back to Thanksgiving and then Christmas. <laughs> um, and, and how are you evaluating kind of that corner outfield situation, given that 
you know, left field didn't necessarily have one consistent starter last year. And, and since Isaiah left the program, you know, there's a lot of uh, open spots there. So how are you kind of evaluating all the various, you know, options in the outfield? Yeah, just letting them play. I mean, Spencer's been out there. Javi's been out there. Uh, Troy can go out there. There's some freshmen. TJ McKenzie's been out there. Um, you know, Bulger could go back out there at certain times too. So it, it's really who we have available, but uh, that's that's very open right now. Uh, I, I guess everywhere is, but especially those corner spots. Where did J.D. Rogers come from? J.D. Rogers came from Carmel High School where Conrad Greger did. So that was a connection that we made through the Gregors and uh, he was a uh, he was a kid that we found to be very athletic and he, he runs, he can move, he's strong. So he's a kid that I hope develops inside of our program. Can you elaborate on McKenzie just a little bit? Cause he hit the ball pretty well this weekend. Uh, looked like he'd taken a big leap from where we saw him last. Thought he made good use of his summer. He got a lot of at bats during the course of the summer. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, he, he may get upset at me for saying this, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't see him as a home run guy, although he won the home run derby in that summer league, but he's, he can, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark because he's strong enough. I think the thing that I've seen most out of him is the repeatability of his swing, his ability to repeat, his ability to stay in the ground his ability to keep his head still, I think, and then the decision-making. I think his decision-making has improved. There's still, a, there's still a next progression for him, uh, but I, I would say offensively, that's the area I've seen him grow the most right now. And he's, he's competent in the outfield. He's still got to grow that way too. But I, 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 that, that kid is I, I just, you know, it, when kids don't get chances as freshmen, sophomores, they, 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 gotta make, they make the decision either internally or externally whether or not they want to continue to stay with it or they want to move on. And, you know, when he didn't travel to Omaha last year, I was, I was wondering how our exit meeting would go. And that kid doesn't blink. He just, you know, it's like it's what you want to hear out of kids. You know, it's like I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this. I, I, I understand you've got kids coming in, but it's like, I'm going to do this. And he's just so locked in and driven to, to play in this program. And I admire that. I admire it a lot. And that there's still more growth that has to take place. But at the same time, I give him a lot of credit. Where are you with Vaz and Colwick in terms of positions? Because those are guys that have been playing all over the diamond at different points. I'm just Curious where you think they both fit best right now. I think Javi second base in left field and then uh, could potentially play a little center field if, if something ever happened to Enrique. And then I would say Tate, I've used Tate all over, first base, second base, third base. We haven't tested him in the outfield, although he, he did that in the COVID year. But I, I'd say right now he's, he's more locked into the infield spots. Anything else? Thank you all for joining today. Yeah, I thank you. It. Thank you, thank guys. You. Max, you were thanks, su Orbs. Surprisingly quiet. Yeah, I bet you enjoyed it, right? I mean, this may have been the best call we've ever had here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thank you, though. Appreciate you all. Thanks, Corbs. Thanks, Josh. See ya. All right, if you guys need anything. Thank you. Thank you.